Hello everyone, today I thought we'd take a look at Flex for Rails. If you're not familiar, Flex allows you to create reusable pure Ruby components for your front end in your Rails apps. So instead of using HTML, it allows you the ability to create classes similar to this nav class that then gets converted into raw HTML. So just like before, how we've covered using the like WebAssembly version of Ruby on a previous video, where you can write Ruby straight to your browser. Here, we're instead writing Ruby in our editor, and then it gets you know converted eventually to the output you see on the screen. So the actual setup's pretty easy. Some people claim this makes the uh, Rails process a bit faster, more productive. For me personally, I know you're probably not here for my opinions, but I'm never a fan of a solution like this because at the end of the day, it's just gonna be spitting out the you know raw HTML uh, and the rest of the industry does use this. So although you might have your preferences towards Ruby, uh, it's not really gonna, it's not great to stray that far away and try to you know hide what's actually happening just because you wanna use Ruby here. A lot of this stuff has already been solved by other people that have been paid plenty of money to figure it out. That said, maybe you want to use this. I'm not going to stop you. Uh, I'm not I'm not the guy on Stack Overflow that gets his kicks by telling you what not to do. So let's go ahead and let's cover this. To get started, we're just going to create a new Rails app. We'll type Rails new, can name it video or whatever. And then we can come over here and, uh, you know, you have the getting started in the setup pages. But we actually want to come down to the Rails specific section over here and we'll click on introduction. This will tell us the gem to install as well as the command to run. So we'll just go ahead and do that real quick. We can CD into our video. I'll run a code dot to open this up in VS Code. A text editor of choice, doesn't matter what you use. And then you should have your gem file open and you can paste in that flex Rails gem. You can then go ahead and run a bundle command assuming this decides to save, that should work. And now we just need to run this bin slash rails g flex colon install command, and that'll install it for us. It goes over some of the things that it changes here, but the real takeaways are gonna be in your app views directory. You now have a components folder with an application component. It does a quick little check to see if it's in development. If it is, it just adds a comment in here, so that's useful. Uh, the other thing it'll do though, is it'll give you the ability to create a uh, application view. And we can take a look at how to do this, but I think the easiest way to look at this is probably how you learned Rails in the first place. We're just gonna go down to the generators and we're gonna generate a couple of components. So we'll get started with the uh, like basic components. So for this, we can just do a Rails G flex colon component and then whatever you'd like to name it. I'm just gonna call mine header. Go ahead and run that. That'll generate our app views components header component, which is over here in app views components header component. If we open this up, we can see a template. It has a H1 with a header and a P that just says find me in blah, 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 blah. This to me seems pretty uh, intuitive if you've used Rails before. This is just the boilerplate that shows up on the page the first time you generate a controller action. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just go ahead and let's do a Rails G controller. Uh, I'll just call this like, I don't know, the, the what controller and I'll give it the about action. Go ahead and run that. We can then run a Rails S and come over to localhost port 3000. Uh, and what did we call this? We called it the what controller with the about action over here. So right here, you can see we have the uh, what hash about, and then it says find me in app views what about. So right here, it's similar how it's set up. It says find me in app views components, header component, because this is a component itself. So that's effectively what this little component does for you when you generate it. Now, in terms of rendering it, I think it'd be better if we first created a uh, controller here using flex instead of using the basic rails uh, generator. So for this, we'll do a rails g flex colon controller, and we can name this whatever we'd like. I'm gonna call mine pages and I'll give it a index action. Go ahead and run that. 
that'll generate the flex controller for us, which is gonna be in our app views pages index underscore view dot RB. And in here we can see a similar setup to that header component that we have over here. It just instead says pages index. So how do we actually use this? Well, if we come up here, we can come up to our app controllers and in here we should have a pages controller. So you can see the layout is set to the application layout that's covered in the documentation uh, somewhere. I think it's in the layout section right here. There you go. Uh, the other thing it does is it calls this render for the pages controller index view dot new. So it's just creating an instance of this index view class, which is of course inside of our uh, index view right here. So our pages index. So it's just creating this with the template. So that's how we can do the uh, controller generation and the view generation. Now, how do we put this together with a scaffold? For this, we're gonna do a Rails G scaffold. We'll call it a post, give it a, I don't know, a title and a body of type text, something like that. This will generate a basic scaffold just like we usually would with Rails. Then we'll go ahead, we'll run a Rails S here, and then we'll come into our routes, which is inside of config routes.rb. And in here, we'll set the root of the application to be the post controller and the index action. We can then come over here to localhost port 3000 and that should hopefully load up this page. We can click run pending migrations or you can run a rails db colon migrate. This will take us to our scaffold. So this works just like it would before out of the box. We'll say test and case for a post and we'll come back. We'll do one more and we'll say another one and we'll hit create post. We can then go back. So that gives us two just to mess around with. Now, in terms of what we actually want to do here, uh, we can come into our, not this index view, we can come into our uh, app views posts. And in here we can generate a index view because right now we have this index.html but I want to generate a flex view. So to do this, we can run a rails g flex colon view for the posts. And we can do a, uh, we'll say index, right? Something like that. That generates a app views posts index underscore view. So over here, app views posts index underscore view dot RB. Now let's take this and let's come up to our app controllers. Let's take a look inside of our pages controller first. So in here, it called this render pages colon colon index dot index view dot new with a layout of application layout. So what we can do is we can grab this render, come over to the post controller come into the index action here and we can say render pages colon colon index view dot new and we can go from here. So how do we actually pass this in? Well, if we just save this, come over here to, uh, let me type rails s. If we now come over to localhost port 3000, uh, oops, we can see this is the pages index. So let's come back over to our post controller. Let's change this to the, oops, the posts index uh, view. I don't know why I copied over the pages and forgot to change it. And now we can see inside of our posts uh, index view right here, we have this post colon in post colon colon index. Sorry, words are hard. And we have this find me in the blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares. So now let's try to iterate through all of our posts in here, just like we would before. So we have this template. Let's come into our post controller and let's try to pass in our at posts. To do this, we can come in here, we can say post colon at posts, or you can change this to whatever you would like. I think the example they had was like post.all.load async, and they just had it right here, uh, somewhere in one of these. I don't recall which one, doesn't matter. So we can try this, but now if we come over here and we refresh, we'll see wrong number of arguments given. Uh, we, give, we gave one, but it expected zero. So how do we get the uh, post controller index view class to uh, accept an additional argument so that we can instantiate this. Well, again, remember, these are just plain old Ruby objects. So we can actually come in here above our template and do a def initialize. And then we can pass in some posts. We come down here and type end. And then inside of this, we can say at post is equal to the posts that we pass in. 
So that's coming from our post controller. We can pass these in now. And in here, they'll be set to an at post. This will then let us use them however we see fit. So that gets rid of our error. Now let's come into the actual template down here and let's mess around with these. So below this header, just like we normally would, let's create a div and then we'll do a do block. So a div do, then we can say at post.each do post. So at post.each do and then post. And then for each of these posts, we can do a, a tag. So let's say anchor with a href of the post URL. And then we can set the post title to be the text for the link. Let's go ahead and let's save this. We can come over here and refresh. And now we can see test and another are here. But of course, it's kind of hard to read. So let's add in a BR. We just have to type BR and we're pretty much done. We can now refresh and there you go. We have the test and the another right here. We can add in something like, oops, a P. And in here, what we could do is the post.body. We could try to save this and we can see this ends up being an issue because here we have the href, which is just like for our a tag, we have a href equal to blah, blah, blah. And then we have the closing tag. And then inside of the actual contents of that tag is where we have the post.title with these braces. So what we actually want with the P tag is sort of like nothing inside of it, maybe a class if we felt so inclined. And then we want the post body inside of these braces, just like this. And now you can see we have the body appearing here uh, without the error. In here, what you could do is you could say the class is something like a, uh, I don't know, post dash body. Uh, I guess we'll just leave it like that. And then you can, can come over here and refresh. You'll see there's no errors, but nothing changes. But now we can hit Control Shift I and hover over these. And we can see this is generating the P tag with the post dash body class attached to it. So yeah, that's the basic gist of this. I just wanted to cover a high level overview of Flex. There's plenty more to look into. If this is something you're interested in, uh, I can also cover additional uh, videos moving forward if it's something you're into. Uh, but I think as far as an opening demo, uh, this is probably a good place to stop. So yeah, it's very simple. Instead of writing your HTML, you're just writing your keywords here and it's just kind of all working how you would expect it to. So hopefully this was interesting. Hopefully this was helpful and hopefully I will see you in the next video.